So today we're going to show you what we really do because uh, the problem is when people hear the word combination student club or, or when they hear a full job title of mine, they get confused because they ask questions like, oh, is this the guy who is in charge of organizing uh, student parties with dance music? No, it's actually not. So today we're here to keep you informed and up to date uh, in regards to uh, one of the key aspects of student affairs work domains, which is the class. <coughs> That's supposed to be my first slide, so we can enjoy that one for a second. <laughs> so, first of all, it is important to bear in mind this simple concept uh, that not only a university is an abundant source of different resources, but so is a student too. So, when, when we talk about the university, university is a source of physical, intellectual and legal resources, at the same time student is a source of ideas, ambitions, energy and potential. And this mutual exchange is happening every single day, whether you want it or not. And I think it is important to ensure that student is getting practical benefit, uh, the student is getting a sense of content, contentment, and also the student is able to fulfill his full potential. At the university. <clears throat> so, what is the role, what is our role as a higher education institution in the context of contemporary student needs and job market demands? So, in my opinion, instead of, like, apart from issuing a higher education diploma to students, uh, we, well, like, we have to have a broader mission for students, for student development. So, uh, I think we are responsible for providing students with interesting, multifaceted, rewarding environment for personal development. Therefore, uh, we are aiming to release graduates not only uh, competent in one particular field of study, but also who are broad-minded, who are sociable, who are uh, fully equipped members of society with active life position. Uh, one of the reasons we uh, take student clubs really seriously, one of the reasons we organize uh, extracurricular uh, activities with educational focus is so-called meta-competence. What is a competence? Competence is a set of characteristics and skills which enable or improve job performance. <coughs> Meta-competence is a competence which is applicable to numerous fields, which is quite flexible. So what are they? Here are ten or nine? Ten meta-competences, which we highlight with Student Affairs College as our main direction for our future work. So we want to focus on all of these while uh, offering you extracurricular, you, I hate this word, out of class uh, activities. So what are these? Some of them might sound confusing to you. So for example, does anyone know what is proactivity? So for those of you who doesn't know, proactivity is an ability to eliminate issues before they even happen. So it's, it's a competence of being in control or creating a situation rather than waiting before something happens. Uh, I'll give you an example um, provided by, by my colleague, Vika. Uh, so imagine you're a student representative and uh, you realize that in a, couple, in a couple of weeks you will have uh, public holidays. And then you drop a message in official in Oculus University chat. Like, oh, hello, does anybody know when, when, when are the holidays? So, how would a proactive approach look like? A proactive approach would look like when you come to Vika or you message student affairs board, you gather information and then spread it to your classmates. Nice and clean. Proactive approach. Then, uh, learning to learn. 
Learning to learn is a competence of organizing your own learning process. Uh, digital grammar, uh, pretty straightforward. Civil competence. Civil competence is an ability to participate actively, uh, constructively, effectively in social and working life, especially in such a diverse community as Inopolis University. So, when we look precisely at student clubs and societies and their benefits, I prefer to um, split them into two layers. The first one is so-called social and entertainment layer. So, five benefits which I listed. So, learn more about yourself. Student club is a great platform for you to find out more about yourself. So, who would have known that you are a gifted dancer if you have never tried? Who would have known that you can outclass anyone in game development, game designing, before you even try? So, student clubs, they contribute to your self-awareness. Break from studies. Well, studying is very important, but giving your mind a break is necessary too. Make new friends. It's been proven numerous times, numerous times that you can find lifetime friends at student clubs. Have great fun. It's a pretty straightforward argument. Like it really it directly affects your emotional state while you study at such a deprived and socially isolated place as Simopolis University. And uh, finally, give back to university. Uh, so your feedback might be converted into attempts to make this university a better place. Second layer is so-called professional layer. So you gain practical experience. Student clubs enable you to get together, get into groups, and test your ideas in a safe environment where making mistakes is okay. You develop soft skills by organizing different events, and one important part of it is a reflection session, which helps you to learn how to learn. So during the reflection session, we try to maintain and highlight the, the best practices we use, and then to eliminate bad, bad practices in the future. Uh, obviously, you can boost your resume with, uh, with different like, competences because the employer can see how you apply a certain skill to a certain event and how you grew and developed. And then you become part of the network. You kind of meet new people, get contacts for the future, with, which might be your future employer or your future partner or sponsor. So this is how you take the most out of out of class activities. You gain competence, you gain experience, you gain knowledge, and you exploit your own potential at the best of it. So now I will give you a practical demonstration of why student club, well, why out of class activity is good in general. So let's imagine this is Sam. He just joined our university. This is his lifetime at the game. So along the way, this lifetime will be filled, will be filling with some stuff. So let's imagine he just started the university. This is his first year. He decided to join, let's imagine, the public speaking club to improve his public speaking skills. So you see in his lifetime that I can point out like this is his achievement during his study. Hello. Hello. So next.
to surround yourself with like-minded people. But then he jumped into an event, into a conference, he attended a conference to like, get extra knowledge from, from the industry. And then finally, Sam decided to run his own conference in Annapolis University. So he got an experience of, of event organizer. So if you see, his lifetime is pretty busy now. And finally, he is graduating with a happy face. <laughs> so this is Bill. Uh, Bill decided to follow a different path. So he wasn't really into volunteering, into student clubs, whatever. So this is how his life path looked like. So he was dwelling along the university life, nothing really happened. He probably got acquainted with some. Yeah, let's see it again. <laughs> like, like, wait, 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 wait. I just wanted to click the other button. So, see, friend, very good. Still smiling. Pass for exams. Well done. So, now, if you look at the whole timeline, I think it's obvious that the guy on the left is more likely to be able, he's more likely to be sociable, he, he's more likely to be socially adapted, and flexible, and he's more likely to demonstrate how he applied his soft skills, how he applied his competences uh, to get experience that will help him to get a job, to meet job requirements. So I think this is quite obvious demonstration. Uh, so, in Oculus University, we have roughly 35 clubs in this thing. Well, they are active at different extent. Some of them are pretty active, some of them are a bit passive, but anyway, uh, we organize, every year we organize around 20, in my opinion, successful events. Uh, five clubs, uh, apart from their regular meetings, apart from organizational structure, they have uh, their own website, they have their own budget, and they work with coaches external coaches, which they recruited for the purpose of club development. Three clubs have external <coughs> sponsors, I think all three of them will speak today. And one club released a book, which I think is a great achievement. Finally, this is the website where all information about student clubs is stored. This website is pretty interactive, it's very simple to use. Uh, there you can find a little profile of every club, which is in our database. So you can see the schedule, who is the club leader, and etc. So now I want to invite the first speaker of tonight, which is the guy in the middle. <laughs> uh, his club, no, 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 take a seat, I'll just make a little, <laughs> little introduction. So, when I first joined this club, uh, I was amazed by the bizarreness and craziness of it. In one lesson, uh, they forced me to run around the, the hall, sing ancient Russian songs, count, count from 1 to 10 in Chinese, uh, throw each other on, on mats, so, so many different things involved. And I think this club is too big and too crazy to, to try to explain it in one sentence in a nutshell. So I would invite Alek Bulachev, who is the unchanged leader of Battle of Great Club. Thank you. Hello. So first I want to present our new logo. It looks like this. Uh, maybe we'll play a little bit with colors, but uh, the shape, it will be like this. So this cute Bronco Jaura. Maybe they remember the song for already for a long time with us. So let's see. And my topic for today is how to prove your club with a touch of bizarreness. So first step. Raise the hand uh, who is the club leader here. One, two, yeah. Do you want to see uh, guys uh, who are like leaders who try to enforce something, create something new without your guidance and so on? Am I right? Do you want it? No. Of course. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> of course not. So, 
the main goal and the most class to make the club members more proactive. We use this word today. Yes. So first I want to start from my appearance. Um, most of these uh, slides will be about my own experience and my humble opinion. So first I want to say about two clubs. <coughs> Uh, my uh, my experience told me that if your club really based on discipline, only about discipline, so you have a lot of rules, restrictions, so on, you won't meet a lot of either friends or project guys. It's about tender club. It's a good club and I have no regret that I trained there, but it's too restricted. Restrict. And opposite side, it's anime club. It's too bizarre because in this case, the people don't have any responsibilities. They just go, sit, a lo laugh a lot, and that's it. So, what? So, in my opinion, you need to try to catch a balance between it. Or, to rephrase, you need to create a club based on discipline, but with the touch of bizarreness. Actually, in our club, it looks like this. That I try to add a touch of bizarreness, and shit happens. <laughs> But what is it, bizarreness? I think these two pictures are presented in the best way. That, uh, I think it means that uh, you just need to do some trick exercises, maybe weird actions, weird events. It's about bizarreness. I'll explain why it's so significant part of each club. So, probably I think you wait how to do it. Unfortunately, there are no guides. But, I want to share my experience, why I begin to think about bizarreness and about all this part. So listen to my story. <laughs> I want to start <laughs> from the beginning. Oh, in the beginning? Uh, yes. I started, uh, my first organization was karate. Actually, here I am 17 years old. So young, innocent creature. Uh, why I put this figure here? Because I want to show you that I spent a lot of time, 11 years on karate. So I know what does sport mean, individual sport to be precise, what to feel pain, what about uh, all things about community. And I want to say that individual sports, it's not a good place for meet friends. I know have no friends from karate, expect, excluding training, a trainer, because you're open to each other. It's one way, and also karate is about discipline. So no jokes during the training, all this part. So, I don't really know the people who is a real pro -tip. Yes, a few of them, but not a lot. Now I want to show you a good example. A good example from my... So I became a student of Valentin University, and I go to Hyoma, historical fencing. So you equip armor, a uh, blunt sword, and hit other guys. It's really fun. Not only guys, also girls. <laughs> it's fun. And it has a good balance. Because in one case, you have some bizarreness, like you wear these clothes, you do some little interesting stuff. In another case, you have, usually it's, it's some kind of sport, because you have competitions, tourneys, and so on. And also you have some hierarchy in many clubs. So it's a good example. I have several friends, I keep contact with them. Another good example, and probably my club first here because of it, it's... Uh, I have a sport class in Bowman State University, and it was my training in it. It was called uh, Slav C, mm, Slavian C System of Barone. In the, I did not translate it in English, sorry. So, it also kept a good balance. Even more, I meet a contradiction, not a contradiction, but in Japanese culture, you used to hide your emotions. But in Russian culture, you try to engage, try to involve others to your, communi I mean, to your communication, to hug others, and so on. So it, it doesn't feel change in this case. But as I told you, it's also a good example because we had martial art trainings, all this part. Only for games it's a bad idea because it would be like an anime club, I suppose. What else? Now I explain to you what about, I mean, I was the, the participation of this club. But now I want also to say about if you try to organize this bizarre action to others, a bizarre event. When I started in Lyceum, we had a three days uh, trip, not trip, but say, yes, we can, and we play a lot of games. And I was the organizer of this part. You may see a lot of uh, children, we played with them, 
in Shaling, uh, we play songs by Francis Diabra, so we do all the stuff which I do in my training. And interesting moment that I try to keep an eye on them. And during the time I see that the people who visited this uh, place was much more united than who didn't, who didn't do it. So it's interesting for me. Now I want to show you what we have in our club. So it's not bizarre tone and bizarre tone. And that we have formations, it's formal part of the training because it helps you to prepare your mentality, your body to certain training. We have martial arts training. In this case, yes, I agree without jokes because you can easily hurt someone. And also club meetings. Club meetings in this case, I mean that when we discuss about uh, our future uh, prospects and so on. And these are anime jokes, tea party, full games. And uh, when it was from uh, our event Hollywood, Hollywood, yes, when it was Halloween, yes, Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> I might not, yes. So to sum up, I want to say that what uh, you need as a club leader, you need to find your way how to put this uh, tiny amount of bizarreness. What does it mean in my case? You need to add some weird stuff, real actions, but if your group ac accept it, you will become more united. It's like in, uh, when I was in Bauman State University, we were crawling on the ground. And other guys, it was just a common uh, sport exercise for others. And they look, who the weird guys? But you think, oh, we are the guys, we can crawl in, you know, in front of other people and uh, without any shyness and so on. So think about it. So, we work it. It's a uh, for our book. Yes, it's on my club. <laughs> little book. Thanks. I don't pay. I don't pay any money. <laughs> <laughs> and it's how the, we had a teach talk. And there is video. So who wants may take picture and find this code code? Pay it, pay it, thanks for attention. Thank you, Ole, for this wild presentation. Uh, our next speaker represents a club who is uh, one of the reasons why we have couples in Inopolis. <laughs> and uh, this is one of the most beautiful, artistic, creative and dancing clubs in Inopolis. Uh, Anastasia Social Dance. Please welcome. <laughs> Uh, some of the news. 
and the second is the university. Uh, since a half years ago, we have had a coach, a coach from Kazan with professional skills. And since that point, we had second student in our club, Bachar. So, what dancing can give you? If you will start dancing, it will definitely improve your posture because it's impossible to dance when you are like gravel. Uh, second is focus lighting. And the third part is coordination because we will start pieces and our club will definitely improve. Next, it will improve your physicality. Uh, first, when I joined the club and I started dancing salsa, I didn't hear the music at all. It was like a mess. There was no instrument, and I can hear the rhythm. After the four months, I started to hear uh, drums, I started to hear piano, I started to hear the rhythm. And after that, I understood when I started hearing other music more passionately, more deeply. And I think this is where the other guys were on the same. Next, uh, it will definitely improve your self-confidence. Because when you learn how to dance, you put a lot of effort. When you put a lot of effort, you definitely have some results which you can show. And it will make you more self-confident. And it helps you from surprisingly. Uh, I was interviewing one girl, one girl from our club, and uh, she was studying for three for six months in Turkey, and she told me that she continued dancing there. She continued dancing and she, after a couple of months, started trusting the boys. It was a real problem for her. Uh, she could not do this because sometimes it was really hard. Uh, sometimes boys would not, uh, how to say, force us. And um, she was really surprised because uh, in dance you cannot feel yourself comfortable if you will not trust your partner if you will not lead or follow in a proper way. Next. Uh, it's very interesting part, maybe for not everyone, but while you're learning, if you're learning dancing with a good teacher, they will definitely tell you some stories, because dancing starts somehow, usually on the street, and those are really interesting, interesting stories. Uh, other part. You can participate in championship competition. Uh, this guy is Pulas. This winter he went to Atletic and won the third uh, place for his physicality in salsa. And we are really glad of him. It's really, really cool what he's doing. And parties. Uh, parties and facilities to dance everywhere. For those who don't know what are social dancing, it is when you have, don't need to have only one partner for all your dance life. You can dance with anyone else who knows the same moves. And if you know those moves, you can go either to USA, either to China, either to Japan. And if you find there a dance floor, you will be definitely able to dance with anyone. And it's really useful when you are in the new country, in the new city, and you don't know anyone else. Well, I want to tell you about Kazan school. Uh, most biggest schools in Kazan know about us. And we usually on the parties ask us, like, where are those guys from the university club? Where are they? You'll become, you'll become. Uh, and usually they're asking because in Nobles they have a lot of guys, but we don't have so many girls. But in Kazan the situation is opposite. Then they have a lot of girls and some have boys. So the girls will be like, where are those two boys? Where are those boys from Sri Lanka? I'm from the uh, And I will tell a little bit about Sensei School. Uh, we uh, have a good relationship with them. Such a good relationship that they gave us a 10% discount for the August uh, workshop, August festival, the Chinese festival, only for our club, only for you know, all the university students, till the end of the April. And I think it's really, really cool. Uh, also, we are traveling, actually traveling a lot. Those are not only cities we have visited, it's only three. 
forehead and it said, come to Nopolis to get your master's degree. He did science. I knew not about data science and I thought, okay, I can flip the table and go to Nopolis and uh, get my master's. So I went here and I wanted to have a community. I wanted to come here and have a lot of people from who know data science because I did not know anything about it. And uh, I came here and discovered that there is no such community at all. I was a bit disappointed because I wanted to learn new stuff and talk to uh, some cool people who know how to do it. And uh, I decided I can establish my own data science community here. I might three friends, they are over here on this slide, and we decided we can just come together in our kitchen and uh, just talk about data science and learn new stuff and watch some live streams of meetups and so on. And then we decided why not expand it further so we could just share what we know with other people, people. So we went with some auditorium and we just uh, created a chat and invited people to this chat and told them that uh, maybe we can just uh, come to this class and just watch some watch presentation about data science and uh, discuss it. And we did it and we did it next week and so on. And later, we decided that we can just make our own course in data science. And we did, we did it from scratch, so we started from basic programming, we moved to, to necessary maps, and then, then we just created a course, and people really started, like, uh, like in usual classes here in the corridor, like the first, they, they came after all their courses du during their usual studies, they came to us and we taught some cool stuff and we learned together because we, we are not experts, we, we are not experts now and uh, so we can, we can, we, you know that we are not experts this, this time. Earlier. So we continue to watch live streams of some data science meetups, we develop our course, and we decided we can go further and create an advanced course. And we did. We created a course of computer vision of natural language processing on all these uh, things. Here. For example, there is a driverless car in the city, which have two cars, and they are being operated by these algorithms. We study. So what we did is we conducted several guest lectures. So we asked several people from industry from, from here, from Annapolis, to come to this uh, uh, university and tell their story, tell what do they do on a daily basis here. And uh, it was actually quite cool. And it was amazing. People are uh, willing to share their knowledge and willing to tell other people what do they do every day and how they enhance other people's lives. So next we decided uh, to abandon our course uh, in data science, our first course, and take a course from all the data science community and uh, teach it in English language. And uh, it, it was a cool experience and I'm happy to attend it because we spent a lot of time preparing for these lectures, but actually only Russian-speaking students came to our lecture, so it was, it was not very, uh, like, students came not for English, but for data science, and it was easier for us and for them just to talk in Russian, as usual. Um, this was, this wasn't the only experiment, so we started Kaggle trainings. Kaggle is a platform for competitive 
data science and we educated them several students who have models of all latest um, computations. And we continued to invite guests to have guest lectures and we had a lot of it from different companies. So this semester we go back to our previous course from last year, our advanced course, and we all went to the Russian language and we are very and uh, I'm happy we can continue to do it even though there's no students anymore, we still can come here and teach these, uh, all, all the students who come to us and want to learn new stuff in data science. So what about our achievements in the chat? It's about 600 people in this chat. We discuss a lot of stuff, a lot of cool new algorithms and computations and so on in our chat. So we have about 100 different people uh, studying on our lectures and around 25 to 30 people on our each lecture. So we created our whole data science company and we hired some of the people we taught. I think it's, it's pretty cool. And we have a lot of weeks on hackathons and several weeks on this schedule platform. So, what we want to do in the future? We record our lectures and plan to upload them to YouTube. And you can, if you want, you can visit our channel. I, I can probably send you a link uh, later. Uh, and um, we are all in branches. Stefano Stina, a few years ago, 
and we really grateful to him for creating this club and for giving us the opportunity to play and to uh, play our beautiful game. Uh, but the most approach of our club and his modern aims and goals was created about a year ago when the um, active and enthusiastic students came to our university and I would like to answer the question with why I started doing this. Firstly, I was inspired by people, by my team, that become my second family here in the police, and I would like to appreciate all of them for help, for being with me in the police days. And uh, moreover, we would like to leave some mark in the history of the police because we all know that this city is a very young one. For us, the community is more than just football. We are not only playing and, and training, but also we leave the matches like during the World Cup. We live together after the one year. We, me and my teammates, we are living in our room. Yes. Moreover, we are watching the games, helping each other, and spending time with each other. So the important thing about football is not only football, and I would like to demonstrate it to you by the video. Uh, amateur league 
8 to 8 uh, format. And also we make, uh, we pay a lot of attention for growing up uh, and developing the sport between the children and we're providing with some kind of workshops for this ch child to, uh, to develop their uh, lifestyle and to motivate them to do sports. And this year, uh, approximately a week ago, we organized our event, uh, Students All-Star event, which was held with three professors, Professor Suchi, Mozart, and Rivera. And we created a unique um, t-shirt that you guys can print right now. It's three types of t-shirts for each of the professors with their portrait name and on the back side of it is the names again and also on the shoulder the name of our organization and sponsors. Yeah. And <laughs> another unique feature of this event was also draft the professor choose their teams with themselves by creating special cards like in the uh, game we created the cards for each of our players with his own characteristics and professor chose their team by themselves. Moreover, this year we are uh, providing first the Red Bulls Football League uh, included it's not only university league, it's all city league but all the city participate here. As you can see, this is the final uh, table after the group stage. Uh, and here is the three to four teams from uh, university, one team of the uh, graduate students, and one team is the, from the companies of the Park. Uh, we are playing each week uh, in the sport complex. And uh, as you can see, the first four, four uh, teams are on the playoff stages. And uh, this Sunday, uh, it's in the final of our league, we will be pleased if you visit us and support the team. Uh, we are playing a team of the first year students and magisters with the team of Techno Park and companies. Uh, this final will be held in Sport Complex at 8 10 pm. Moreover, uh, our club is uh, communicating with this and dealing partners with another clubs like Indonesia and others. And to all of our events, and the thing is that just the Russian professional Russian Premier League can be jealous to our club because we are providing all the photos, all the video materials, all the statistics, everything. Like it's open source and it's for free, and you can we'll go to the website and see all the videos, all the photos from the events. So. Uh, I think we see for my club and I appreciate you for listening to me and if you have any questions I'm uh, you're free to ask. Thank you Alex. Do you have any questions? No? Take a seat. <laughs> so next club. Next club's profile is all about games, but they are not playing games. They are not messing around. They are very serious about it. The most, one of the most professional, collaborative, and vibrant student clubs. Please welcome Anton Sudan.
And today I want to show you our experience and how not to establish your club, but actually how to build community from it. Uh, please raise your hand if you are in Indigen Dev Club Telegram chat. You're welcome, guys. I see some people who are actually not other kind of members of club, but at the same time you are the part of community actually. And the difference between the club and community is that if you have something that uh, something similar to the field of the community, you are the part of it. It doesn't matter what do you think about it. So in the Gear Dev Club Telegram chat have one hundred more than one hundred people. And in the same time, of course, not all of them participate in regular meetings. I think can say about that 20% that of them may participate. But it's still uh, united people who may be not uh, related to game development, but there are, there are people who can help us and could be interested in activities that we provide. And my first advice on the way to the community is to be open. Because if you are open, you are uh, you act like a brave person. Uh, as an example, this open policy uh, provides us one effect that we have on one of the biggest events that we have ever organized, Global Game Jam 2019. We have about we have 112 participants. Uh, uh, keep, uh, keep your mind on numbers. 112 participants. 75 of them was not from Innopolis, and half of them was not even from Cafe. Just think, 135 members in chat and 35 of them from Krasnodar, Moskva, Penza, Kaliningrad and a bunch of different cities, even from Respublika Taha. That's too far from here, from it. So keep it in mind, be open if you want to build a community, but not a club. The second thing is about brand. And this thing helped us because we started to develop our brand right from the beginning of CLAP. We have our own Twitter, Instagram, we have our own brand name, we have our own brand logo and even uh, site. This helps us to communicate with external companies, with external people, and they, it helps with those people to understand who we are and what we do. And, uh, you know, I'm often talking about communication. And uh, just think about it. Com uh, communication, community, communication, community. It has the same beginnings. Boom! Confidence? I don't think so. So, my uh, opinion is just that you have to communicate, and the first company that you should communicate is your university. Indigent Dev Club works on different research projects in our university, especially with Artificial Intelligence Lab, of course, Artificial Intelligence in Game Development, to be precise. And I can say that it helps students to work in game dev and at the same time to learn educational topics. It's often hard to combine club activity and at the same time activity in educational process. But this is just one of the solutions. And it doesn't matter what your club are. It's dancing, it's maybe football, or it's kind of a professional related club. You still can make some research because computer science skills allows you to make it in different approach. As an example, I know there are, I mean, there are universities, there are students who may have a thesis on dancing and drawings. Use it as an opportunity for you. And of course, if I'm talking about communication, I have to talk about external communication. And my advice to you is to, is to use this external uh, companies not only as a sponsor, but as a brand that you can use in your events and projects. If you just say, we have a Red Bull as a sponsor, that just sounds cool. And you can use it. And don't forget about one thing. You should take someone from them, but you also should give someone them. For example, it could be project or just promotion. And of course, all of the steps usually have some goal. And our clubs also have some goals. But as a club member and a club leader, you should understand what is this goal about. And when I'm talking about goals, I don't mean a mission, abstract mission. I mean precisely a measurable goal. For us, for example, to become a company, but not only, only the club, is one of the goals. And we are on this way. Why do we want this? Because, and why do we want to develop our community? Because we want to be a company. 
Why do we, do we want to develop educational track? Because we want to our students more to engage them and at the same time do not start from the educational process. That's why you should define your goal and why you do it. And the last, and I can say the most important thing, and the old steps that I described before are actually not important if you do not consider the last one. Do not be alone. We are making clubs to be together, not alone, right? And you should surround yourself with people who are patient about the same things that you are. If you just patient about anything, it even doesn't matter what actually it is, just join us, your entity in that club. Thank you. Thank you for this amazing and inspirational speech, Anna. So two clubs to go. Uh, our next club is a part of a uh, famous, dangerous and well-known Russian hacking community. And Ilyavonov will tell us whether we should be aware of them or not. Ilyavonov, CTF. Hi, hello everyone. Uh, today I will make you a, a brief introduction to the Inner City Club because uh, in our time uh, we have a lot of uh, people that are thinking that we are just some black hat hackers who are doing some stuff uh, in private. So, uh, the first uh, idea that comes to your mind uh, when you hear about uh, CTF is, well, what it is. Uh, and let me explain. Firstly, CTF is a competition. Uh, just like an ACM, uh, it is, uh, people are given some tasks and they are earning some points for solving them. Secondly, uh, CTF is all about information security. Well, uh, this is the reason that why someone calls hackers. And last but not the least uh, is that CTF is a, a team activity. Uh, and let, uh, let me sum this up. Uh, CTF stands for Capture the Flag and uh, is team-based competition on information security. One would ask, uh, why Capture the Flag? What is the flag? And the answer is simple. Uh, flag is uh, some private uh, information that can be stolen from you uh, by some hackers. It could be passwords, email accounts, bank accounts, and so on and so forth. And, well, uh, now the question, why the hell we are doing it? Uh, and, uh, as uh, in every uh, life, uh, someone is doing something to uh, get some profit, to get some uh, benefits. And in our case, these benefits are skills. I would like to divide them into two uh, major groups, hard skills and soft skills. We'll start with the hard. Uh, hard skills, uh, which you'll gain uh, while playing CTFs, uh, are hardly interconnected with their information security topics. These are uh, cryptography, reverse engineering. If you don't know what is reverse engineering, uh, well, it's pretty hard, but it, it can be described very simply. Uh, you have some compiled binary code, you are trying to decompile it to uh, some source code, uh, to some assembly code, and uh, to understand what the hell is going on here. Uh, then we have web security, which is a very popular topic nowadays, because, uh, well, everyone uh, is using the internet and everyone wants to stay secure and uh, to keep their secrets private. Uh, then we have technography, uh, which is a very interesting topic, very underestimated. It is a technique to hide the fact that you have the information. For example, to hide it in their image. Uh, then we have social engineering. Uh, well, actually social engineering in the city of competitions uh, is uh, not very, uh, is not so highly used, but in real world hacking, uh, social engineering, engineering is the main part because it is uh, much more simple, uh, simpler to hack a person than to hack a computer. Uh, then we have a programming, and it is uh, the only one skill, uh, the basis of which you need uh, to start the CTF. And also networks. Uh, network, uh, network skills are um, very important uh, in CTF because uh, there are a lot of vulnerabilities that can be exploited uh, due to uh, network misconfigurations. And we continue with soft skills. 
The first one is uh, teamwork. Uh, obviously, CTM, uh, as CTM is a uh, team-based competition, uh, you always need uh, to have a very good communication in your team. Secondly, it's a negotiation or discussion. Uh, you will, uh, you absolutely will have situations uh, when you have a different uh, ideas, different solutions for some problem, uh, but you need to come up with only one and do it very fast. Uh, next, we have contacts or also networking. Uh, while you are playing uh, some settings, uh, you will uh, meet new friends, uh, you will make new contacts. And uh, uh, I don't need to tell you uh, why contacts are very important in our lives. For example, for now, uh, we have a partnership with Kaspersky Lab, uh, with positive technologies. Uh, we have a lot of friends in other universities. Uh, in other CTF teams. Uh, then uh, there are adapting and searching. Why adapting is important? As in every competition, uh, you are always in a new environment. And you always need to adapt to this environment very fast to get its it benefits. And the last one, searching. Uh, well, who of you is searching in Google? Raise your hand, please. Are you doing it fast? Can you search the generic information in uh, several minutes? Because this is uh, very important in every competition and in everyday work. If you are able to search that information uh, very fast, then you will spend more time uh, to apply uh, this knowledge to your problem. And you will have more time to solve more problems. So, uh, let's talk about our meetings. Uh, what do we actually do? And uh, here we are. Then I'll play a video and let's see can you Student 
Russian school. In, the, uh, in this year student competition, uh, we had more than 60 teams uh, on their online qualifier, and uh, 15 top teams uh, were here on the offline panel. Uh, worth mentioning that uh, the competition was won, uh, won by their Inopolis team from the uh, Master and Bachelor of Students. And also, the uh, school competition uh, is right now as famous as uh, all Russian Olympiads in uh, informatics, which is what happened here not so long ago, and it also gives uh, points for uh, school records. And uh, that's all that I wanted uh, to say uh, you and remember to keep your secret friend. Thank you. So the last speech of the day will be given by a uh, club leader whose club is the most fearless in the University of Minneapolis because they do the most dangerous thing in the world every single week. They practice public speaking in front of a big crowd. Please welcome our eloquent Mr. Ezio. Club, 
and we have an executive committee member right here sitting with us, Alex B. And we have Mike Spray today. And now it's properly structured. Now we have our own club web page. And guess what? Professor Joseph Brown visits in every meeting. He's here every meeting. It, and it's like on the basis of two weeks. We have professors, Professor Joseph Brown, Professor Christina Di Corsi, she's from Canada as well. So we have here our native speakers who are here to help you with your vocabulary, with your grammar, with everything else that you need to be prepared for public speaking. And see, I don't have slides. I'm sorry, like, I don't have slides. Sorry to disappoint you guys, but you will learn to speak without slides or maybe with slides. You will learn to speak within some amount of given time. You will learn to speak with proper feedback and with specific constructive feedback. And so let me quickly dive into the process, how it happens, how it goes. So you will be given time, two weeks. And in that time, three prepared speeches. So let's say, let, let's say you want to volunteer for speaking and then you are given two weeks time, as I said. And after that, on the next meeting, you will speak for that prepared speeches. And after you speak, there will be there will be a, an evaluator, three prepared speeches, three evaluators. So they will give you proper constructive feedback. It might be criticized, it might be positive, it might be negative, but that's on you. That's why, why we are there, like we are there to learn. If it's negative, you have to work on it. If it's positive, you have to make it more better. And if it's the best, then you have to your goal. You are there for, to become the best public speaker. You are there to become the best Toastmaster. So you have achieved your goal and congratulations on that. So, all this said, for final words, I want to say we are going to have a Toastmaster meeting right after this event. So if you have time, you can join us in that also. And today we have a guest speaker from USA. He's going to give a wonderful speech, I suppose. So you can be present here to speak that. And just final words, the roles of Toastmaster. There is a Toastmaster, of course. And our counter who comes, uh, mm, oh, there's a table topic speaker. That's the most important part because all of you guys sitting there can participate. Because I have a random table topic here. You come from there, choose one, speak for two minutes. That's the major goal of the club. We want you to speak as much as you can in the given amount of time. So, speaking of time, there will be a timer, of course. He will show you something with his red, yellow uh, dots and you have to be so time specific. And grammarian, of course. Grammarian will write some word conference. And you should try to use that word throughout the meeting. And whoever uses the word must, in a meaningful way, he or she will win. And as you said, table topic, best table topic speaker. So all of these in a structured way, in an advanced curriculum, we give you the best materials. Toastmasters, like it's a paid membership club, so yeah, that's a high five. So we, you will get the really uh, advanced curriculum from the Toastmaster itself, Toastmaster International, and then speaking in every two weeks, taking the roles. That's how you improve your public speaking. So I welcome you. So not that we welcome you to start your journey of public. speaking speaking right here in Innopolis with us, Innopolis International Public Speaking Club. Thank you. Why did you join me though? Still have to speak. <laughs> um, so that's it for today. The conference is finished. Thank you for your time. We really appreciate your efforts, the presenters, the visitors. Thank you very much. If you have any questions in regards to uh, opening up your new student club or to run your own student club's project or anything to do with student clubs, you can see me in 319 or you can message me in Telegram. So have a nice evening and join Toastmasters tonight if you have spare time.
Thank you.